There's just something about the cool days of autumn that make me crave anything made with apples. There's pie, cake, cider, dumplings, donuts, oh, the list goes on forever. So how many things can you do with an apple? That's a very good question, which is why we're here at Laura's Orchard in Harford County to get some answers. And believe me, these are the right people to ask. The Lohr family knows a thing or two about this favorite fall fruit. They've been farming in Maryland for almost 100 years and growing apples for almost as long. In the 60s, they planted the orchard and started the orchard part of our business, and that's what we've really continued to do. For third-generation farmer Candace Lohr Pierce and her husband Daryl, letting customers pick their own fruit is a big part of their business. Nice pull. We do the pick your own peaches, and we do pick your own strawberries, and we usually do a, a little stint of pick your own cherries. And then the main picking is this time of year with apples, and we're available every day for people to come out and pick. As we walk through the orchard next to trees loaded with big, beautiful apples, I understood the appeal. There are so many people that come in and say, I've never been to a farm and picked an apple before, which for me is very surprising because I've grown up on one. I'm probably somebody that has never, ever bought an apple out of the store because I've grown up eating fresh apples, and I know you can't get any fresher than picking it off of the tree. And picking is easy. All it takes is a flick of the wrist. You're best if you can give it a twist instead of just tugging and pulling because that'll help break the contact with the tree, and you don't take the bud wood, you just keep the, keep okay, the apple. Let's try it. Yeah. Look at that. Yep. It worked perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> it was meant to be yours. With seven acres of apple trees, there's plenty of varieties to pick from. Galas, Macintosh, Grimes, Empires, Jonathans, Stamens, Golden Delicious, Red Delicious. We have some Granny Smiths, Fuji. But if you can't choose a favorite, you can sample a medley of them in their fresh apple cider. What kind of apples make the best cider? A mix. Mm -hmm. We like to have some sweet apples and some tart apples and try to have at least three different kinds of apples in each batch of cider. Candace's father, Andrew, started making cider back in the day to earn extra money during the winter after the apple season ended. Made 500 gallons the first year with a hand, little hand press. What do you do now? A little over 100,000 gallons. Oh, that's, a, that's a little bit of an improvement. A, yeah, yeah, but don't forget now, that's been 60 years. <laughs> oh, my, yeah, okay. Of course, the hand crank cider press soon gave way to a much faster system. Today, the apples are washed by machine before getting ground to a pulp. Workers spread the pulp onto fabric-covered racks, which are then squeezed in a giant press. The juice runs out, where it's collected into a big tank before it's quickly pasteurized and bottled. And now, Lohr's Cider has become so popular, they have to buy extra apples from other orchards just to meet demand. Talk about a sweet success. Do you happen to have a favorite apple? My favorite apple is Golden Delicious. I can cook with it, I can eat it fresh. When you make an apple pie, it doesn't cook into applesauce, it stays <laughs> lumpy. I like the pieces of apple in my apple pie. I think so. And I like an apple pie that tastes like apples. Which reminds me, of all the different ways to use apples, pie has to be one of the best. Candace, this is the time of year where something in me just says, go out and make an apple pie. It's irresistible. And we have here the Lores Orchard apple pie, the, the real traditional one. Yes, it is. What kind of apples are you using in this? Actually, I use whatever baking ones we have available. Today, I used Ida Red, I used Grimes, I used Golden Delicious, and I used an Empire. So I mix them all up so it has a nice blended flavor. I think it's really important to do that, to get the blend. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a little taste Please of it. Please do. Hopefully you enjoy uh, it. Are there any secret ingredients in this? Well, my mom always used, instead of using flour to make it congeal, we always used tapioca pudding. So mm. two to four tablespoons to gel it up, and you have a much nicer flavor. This is a beautiful pie. It really tastes Thank great. You. We're going to put the recipe on our website at mpt.org slash farm so you can try it at home, and I really think you should. For The Local Buy, I'm Al Spoiler. Joanne? 
To get the recipe featured in this video, click the link in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss future stories. Thanks for watching Maryland Farm and Harvest.